I hope that everybody's remaining safe and staying healthy. Just want to let everybody know, just to start this off, it's good to be back here in the building with the players and the organization, and it feels good to be back, getting back to football and doing what we do best, and that's just chopping wood. So if anyone has any questions, please start us off. Let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Andy Reid was recently on 610 and and noted that uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire reminds him a lot of you and I, I was wondering how you would feel about that and and what are the challenges for a rookie back that's gonna be expected probably to to step in right right away here well if coach said that I'm gonna take that as the highest of compliments because he's a, <laughs> a lot quicker than me and can do a whole <laughs> lot more than what I did coming out but I will say this uh the kid's got a great look about himself he works hard he takes a tremendous amount of pride in everything that he does He's in there with a good group. Coach Dillon's doing a hell of a job of getting those guys going. You know what? It's just a day-to-day deal, play-by-play. We just want to make sure that he's absorbing all the information, and then he can go out and process it and make it happen. But right now, so far, so good. Let's go to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Uh, Another question about Edward Hilaire. Just what what, what are your thoughts on him after seeing him two days in pads now? And also uh, your thoughts on that hit he took from Frank Clark along the sideline during practice. (laughs) Hey, that's football. Welcome back. Hey, Frank got him. He tagged him a little bit. Welcome to the rookie in. Hey, that's part of the game. But I will say this. uh, It's been good watching him, you know, the past two days. And every day has been a learning process. Uh, The biggest thing that I tell all the guys, regardless if it's Clyde, Okay, or somebody that's down the line. We want all our guys to go out there and play hard and play fast and have a sense of urgency. If he makes a mistake, it's okay. We'll correct it. The thing that we want to do is just eliminate the mistakes moving forward. But right now, he seems to be doing a good job. Like I said, Coach Dillon's doing a heck of a job with him, and those backs have have, have loved him up. They're getting him going, and everybody's moving in the right direction. Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. A couple things. One, no preseason. As an offensive coordinator, what do, what do you lose uh, by not having the preseason? What are you guys going to have to overcome there? And then does, uh, you know, how far behind, if at all, are you guys as far as, I know you always have new wrinkles every year. Are you behind on any of the new installs? Well, uh, first of all, Seren, it's good seeing you. And, yeah, good uh, to see you, Coach. <laughs> I will say this. Uh, with the bit not being any uh, preseason games, I will say this. The process is right where it needs to be. This is just like a college setting. The only thing that we're doing, we're just mentally and physically getting our guys ready to make sure that they're good to go on day one. Now, the beauty of everything is that we've had time throughout the offseason to hit a lot of Zoom meetings with our guys, okay? Then as, the, as we started training camp with all the walkthrough work, yeah, we would have wanted to go and, and, and play fast and do all that, but we've given our guys an opportunity to absorb a lot of information. In fact, we may be behind physically because we physically just haven't had the, the groundwork to do, but mentally, our guys are doing a heck of a job. Now, would you love to go out there and have an opportunity to see these rookies uh, play in the preseason game? Yes, we would, but it's unfortunate that we're living in this circumstance, but we're going to make the, map, the most of this opportunity that's being presented. We're just going to continue to chop wood every single day. Let's go to Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. With Edward Zolaire, we know he worked out with Patrick Mahomes during the offseason. How, how beneficial do you think that's been for him after you've, you've seen those two, uh, with, with the way they've worked together over these last two days? And secondly, how do you think the, the, the running backs behind him are working out and, and as you go through this process? Well, just like anything and everything, we talk about this is – these guys need to develop a chemistry. I'm not aware of how much they spent time together this offseason, but if they did, I know uh, that helps because they get to work together and do some things uh, to start talking about what needs to be done and how we're going to do it. But the thing that I love about it is just the communication factor that takes place in our meetings because when we're watching film together as a group. I mean, we're we're always encouraging our guys to to talk amongst each other. That way guys are being held accountable, but also, too, they understand exactly where they fit within the concept of the pass scheme that we're talking about. Now, as far as the the other running backs, all those guys are competing. we got a very, very good group. Coach Dillon doing a heck of a job with those guys. And, uh, I mean, one thing I love about them, I think with the exception of uh, Daryl Williams, hell, I can can look all of them in the eye. So that's that's a plus. (laughs) Go to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. A couple of guys, even Tedrick Thompson yesterday, acknowledged that Andy Reid's training camps are usually more grueling than the average NFL training camp. You've been with Andy uh, since you guys have been in Kansas City. Just why do you feel like you guys uh, are best at equipping and preparing guys in training camp that maybe 
are above what most teams do, maybe even in your experience as an NFL player. And then secondly, uh, with the guard situation, having Andrew Wiley back healthy, uh, introducing Osimile to the system, just what have you seen from those two guys through the first two days of padded practice? Well, first of all, training camp has always been tough. I remember <laughs> as a player in 99, that was probably one of the toughest camps that I've ever been through. But you have to understand that coach has a way of doing things where we're going ment- to where we're going to physically challenge our guys, but also mentally challenge them to be at their best. So we can hit that. We can hit a stride going into the season, being ready and prepared to play. So that's what makes the training camp challenging because we want our guys to make sure we kick this season off. We didn't leave any stone unturned or anything behind. We want to make sure that we're game ready. Now with the guard situation, I tell you what, hats off to, to the doctor, you know, that's an admirable, uh, admirable decision that he made the ultimate respect. Uh, with the new guys coming on, like I said, these guys are they're learning, they're processing the information, uh, they're doing a great job of competing, and they're working hard, and that's important. Now, the thing about it, you know, with Wiley back in there, all these guys are finding their rhythm and their chemistry together. If anything, we just need that growth to continue within that room, and it'll work itself out as we continue to go through a canning, training camp. Right, let's go Sam and then uh, Matt Derrick. Just to follow up on that guard question, uh, with Andrew Wiley specifically, obviously he had battled some injuries last year and lost his spot. What's your confidence level if, if he's got to be the guy again this year? And um, just, just a second question on, on Patrick. I know that he's a guy that even though he won the Super Bowl wants to get better. Is there something specific that you guys have targeted in this year's training camp? Well, here's the thing about Wiley. You know, Wiley played a lot of productive snaps for us over the years. Uh, He had a setback last year, but things happen. The thing that we love about Riley is that he's never stopped competing. So he's constantly competing. He's back in the lineup. Now it's about making sure that he can sustain a high level of play throughout the course of training camp and into the season. So right now, all of those guys are competing. And one thing that we do know, okay, uh, we're going to need all of those guys when it's all said and done with it. So we want to make sure that all of our guys are maximizing the opportunities and the reps that are presented to them so we can be productive moving forward. Now with Pat, Pat's, And I'll say this, kudos to Pat. He's done a heck of a job. He's had a great career so far. But you guys have been around him. You know him. He's a competitive prick, okay? He's a great kid, but he's a competitive prick. He wants to improve at everything he possibly can improve upon. He wants to be the best at whatever he can do. And along the way, he wants to make sure that he's leading the guys. He wants to be held accountable by his peers, but also, too, he just wants to work. And that's what you love about uh, being around him every single day. It's said with offensive linemen that, you know, snaps and reps are critical to just improving and getting better. What does a guy like Lucas Niang miss out on as a rookie as far as that goes in development-wise with opting out this year? Well, first of all, let's just make sure we're being fair to Lucas. Let's just say this. Lucas opted out for whatever reason and hats off, you know, and kudos to him. Now, you have to admire his uh, his decision. And when he comes back, we'll welcome him back with open arms. Uh, obviously he loses reps. He loses a lot of experience just because he gets to sit in that room with coach heck, who does a heck of a job with all of our offensive linemen, uh, and Corey Mate. But the thing that he's going to miss out more than anything is just having an opportunity just to absorb that information. Yeah. You want to go out there and work through it, but more than anything, just the knowledge that's going to be presented because of the, the vets that we have in the building now. I mean, we got KO here, you got fish, you got Schwartz, you got Ryder. Uh, we got Mike Rimmers, you know, we got a lot of valuable guys who can pass on a, a great deal of knowledge. So he's missing out on that. But I do know this. When he comes back next year, we'll be waiting on him and he'll be ready.